Hello everyone. Welcome to the sixth session of Data Wave. And hi, this is Abhishek. So today class session is also a continuation of co functions. So let us first see what we have like which all functions we have seen or discussed in the previous session. So this was the agenda for our previous session where we have seen all these few functions like all these 28 functions. OK, so for today we are going to take up few other function which are. This these are the agenda for our today's session where I will walk you through all this 26 functions. OK, so let's start with the first one, which is split by. So. As the <coughs> name suggests. The split by is used to. Split a string with a given match. OK. Just one minute. Can you hear me? Ravi? Yes, sir. Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. So how the split by works. Now see, I have this string. Okay. I have this string and I have got a, a full stop and a, like a slash. Okay. So I want to split that with respect to the dot and the slash. So this is what the regex function I have written and this is splitting it out to to the locations where it is getting the dot and the slash. Similarly, we can do it for number, but automatically it converts it. OK, number to string and I have given the value as three, so it is splitting it from three like here. You can see the answer. So it is like one, two, four, five. So it has splitted that number and the number which we used or the value which we used to split it. It doesn't take that into account. OK. Here I have got a dash b dash c and I have given this regex function. So what this mean is I need to split it by b. But also I don't want to represent the number which is like the letter which is. Ahead b and after b. So if you can see. Here I have got a and C. So if I remove this. So I can see the dashes. So this is to represent like any one character before B and after B. In this I have got alphanumeric value in capital. Well, the alpha alphabets are in capital letter in small letter. Then I have numbers. So what I have given I have a give I have given a regex function to split it with respect to any number or capital letters we are getting. OK, so here after I have got everything capital. That's why it is not showing that before this wherever I've got a number. It has split that up into different. Uh, values in a array. Similarly, we can do it by uh, spaces. OK, this one is to represent like split it with the capital D wherever it found capital D and the two characters after that. So here we can see like. Uh, it has removed a and t okay but for d like it has given a space because uh, d is the beginning of the string and for null it is null okay so this is how the split by works similarly we have got one more that is joined by that is opposite to split by so in split by we are splitting a string or number in to different half in an array but joins by joins that up OK, so now if I if I do in this, OK, but here I cannot use any like a regex function because for splitting, OK, it's fine. We know from where we need to split uh, which all character we need to take, but for join by we can join it using just one character or string. So in this only if I try to put a join by. OK, now see this is all split into an array to a new line. Now I'll do a join by here. Join by using. Suppose a dash. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, see. Now it has joined that. 
array of string into a complete string. Okay, so this is what the join by do. It joins a splitted string into a complete string. Now in this case, I have two array, uh, sorry, one array with two inputs. That is one, two, comma, four, five. So it has added that, okay, into a string using join by three. In this case also, using a dash, it has added this array of string. And for null, it is null. Any question in this split by and join by? Because this is uh, like very uh, commonly used functions. So any question in this too? Anyone? No questions. The, okay. the yeah. third function. Sorry. Can you explain the third one? Which one? The well, first, even the function num. The function this, he told he mentioned third function. I think it's uh, actually by the B, the B actually is the second one. B. Yeah. This one. Yes. So this is like see, I have an array uh, like I have a array with two inputs. One is one two comma. Four, five. So this is like a it, this is in different line or we can say there are two values. Now I want to combine that to become a string or a single value. So what I have done, I have joined it using three. So here is my value. So earlier it was 12 comma 45. Now it is one, two, three, four, five. We're joined by three. Now similarly, if you'll see this, I have a array of string where I have this three alphabets individually. What I have done, I have joined it using a dash which come up like this into a complete string. Okay, so the split by divides a string. Okay, uh, into an array of string, whereas a join by adds a array of string into a complete string. This is what that do. Okay, so it's the same. If we change that three to anything else, it will join it by that particular yes. whatever dash. Yeah, see, so I have joined it. Hmm. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay. I can okay, okay. I can I can add it by dash. See, it's added it by dash. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now next one is contains. This is also like very commonly used. So what it do is like if you are providing any uh suppose any string or any object and you try to find a like a particular Maybe a string, a number, or a, a let, letter inside that value. It will say whether that value con, uh, is present or not. Like it will give you a true or false value. Now in this case, I have a array of number, and I have defined like whether it contains the digit two or not. So it contains the digit two. That's why it's giving me true. Okay. In this, I can give a string as well. Like in from this string, does it contain a string called mule? Yeah, it do. So it's true. Now it is also case sensitive. Like if I make it small m, it will give me false because we don't have a mule with small m over here. It is capital. Okay, so you can find with regex function. Okay, now this function indicates like do do I have number or capital alphabets? Yes, I have that over here. Okay, so it is true. Now in this case, okay, I am taking this variable or this object, I can take it as payload also. What I'm doing is I'm just finding, like I have an object with field A, which have some value, and I'm finding like the field, any of the field contains the value two. So it is true. Now in this case, this contains two. So it is two. Now the same way I can represent it like in this payload, now suppose I have this as a payload. OK, this is my array of object. Now I want to take. I want to get it from this a the, the value of a and see whether it is true or not. True, if I remove this two and I make it three. It is false. OK, so contains help to check uh, whatever string we are or whatever input we are providing in this contain that particular thing is present in the value or payload which we are providing. 
okay it it checks that and it's written you the true or false value whether it's contained or not now uuid so this i have explained yesterday also this is to generate a random like uuid so like suppose if you want to uh, have a correlation id or transaction id in your api so that like suppose you are doing uh, api lit connectivity where in the experience api like you had generated this a correlation id and you are passing this throughout your process and system layer so that if there will be any error you will you can track that up with, using this correlation id okay so this is what it randomly generates any uuid so okay so it's randomly generated so as many as time i will call it it will keep on changing okay it is generating normally like randomly getting generated randomly now round what round do is whatever decimal digit we give it it will round it to the nearest whole number okay so now in this case this is 1.1 so it's rounded to 1 this is 2.5 so it takes the nearest number as 5 here it is 1.4 so the rear, the nearest number is 1 now if you remember yesterday we have two other functions seal and flow so what they were doing is they were rounding like seal it was rounding a number to the nearest greatest whole number and similarly floor was rounding it to the greatest lesser number now in this if you'll see so round it doesn't like it doesn't matter okay now in this 1.1 1 is the nearest so it rounded to that 2.5 3 is the nearest it rounded to that 1.4 it's rounded to 1 that is the nearest like it is a deviation of 0.5 like more than 0.5 less than more fine uh, 0.5 but in seal and floor seal means uh, we can say ceiling okay so it rounds to the greatest whole number like in this we have 1.2 but it's rounding it to 2 okay because 2 is greater than 1 and 1.2 it's like greater than 1 so it is rounding it to 2 in this case even i have 1.7 it is rounding into one that means floor to the nearest uh, uh nearest lower value okay so 1.2 is near to 2 but 1. Point, uh, like 1 is less than 1.7 that is the lowest value for this one so it is rounding it to 1 okay so this is what round ceiling and seal and floor do any question till now anyone any question hello yeah hello Abhishek. yeah 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 uh, could you please explain that uh, contains uh, reg regex function contains okay regex function okay yeah see there are many type of like different different combination of regex this regex what i defined is it says either my string should contain number or it should contain capital alphabets okay now here it contains number also it contains alphabet also so it is true now if i remove this and i put only alphabets that is also true because we have got alphabets okay now if i try to see for dot okay only dot it is false because there is no dot if i try to see for slash okay not present okay if i try to see for this backslash no not present okay so it identifies the value which you have provided to check whether that value present in your string or not it will check that and it will provide you true or false whether like it present or not that's what this do and the regex function which i have written that is like to check whether it is getting alphabet or numerical value okay also if you want to have alphanumeric okay this is the this is the like regex function for that so what this represent is this represent 0 to 9 a to z 
capital A to Z and underscore. Okay, so so there are a lot of regex function which you can see and you can know like what is the meaning of uh, individual regex function. Okay, got my point. Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, now scan. So scan what it does, whatever string value you provided and whatever regex function. OK, you provide against that. It tried to match that and it tried to show you that uh, that string only. OK, so this is like just pay a little bit attended uh, attention in this because this is little tricky. OK, it took me little time also to understand. So what see what it is doing in this regex for null it is null. OK, in this I have data wave at the rate mulesop.com and I have this regex function. So what this regex function is. I am searching for all lowercase a to z. OK, then separated with uh, under at the rate again after at the rate I should again have lowercase a to z. Then I should have a dot and then again some alphabet. So that is matching. OK, that is matching. So it is showing me that and also it is dividing each string like which I am getting before at the rate and dot which I have defined over here. Now suppose if I remove this part. OK, so dot com is not visible now and from here also like only it is showing data wave and MuleSoft. OK, so it is scanning like the given uh, the given value, the given regex function which I have defined whether it is matching that or not and it will show me only the match cases. Now in this case I have defined like I should have alphabet which is before at the rate. So that is only data wave and it is only showing me data wave. OK, so this is how it works. Now I have defined all the all the like alphabets. OK, which is present. I have not done any deviation over here, so it is showing me that. So this first one represent the string which is found and again this like this breaks up that string now again if i'll show you to make it more understandable so now see in this case i have given at the rate so the first line show me what is the matching case and then it is breaking that up into two different line okay this one this way and this one this one now when i say this so it is showing me which is the matching case and it's also dividing that. So for alphabets data view is mis uh, matching. So it is repeating now at the rate doesn't match this alphabet value. So it is blank MuleSoft match. It is showing that dot doesn't match. So it, it, it is empty com match. OK, and then like after com uh, spaces, it's aut automatically taking that. OK, so this one can like whatever you have provided is it matching or not like OK, it will give all the match values to you. So that's what scan means now if I put com. OK, now I have not given any regex function. I have simply given the string directly. I have just printed that so it is showing me that but it is not showing me over here. Because it is not the part of the regex function. It is directly a string which I have given. OK. But yeah, so that's how uh, the scan works. OK. Just function just of star. Sorry. What is the function of star if we remove the star from the star means all. OK, if I do I if I remove star, it's give me only one letter, only one character, which is which is before at the rate. When I do star, that means it's giving me like all the characters which is before at the rate. See, I remove star. It's giving me only E, which is before at the rate. OK. Now see this doesn't match. Why only E it is showing as answer? This is this is showing only one character. Now when I say A to Z, that means only one character I need. I don't need more than that. This one represent like after after at the rate also I have some character before uh, dot also have some characters. OK, so it is aggregating that one and it is showing me mule. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. So like mm. there are a lot of combination and a lot of meaning of this one. Like I read uh, somewhere it is showing like only this means only asterisk, but this means the complete value what we are providing for this A to Z. All the values which we are getting for A to Z. Okay. Now match case cases. So there are uh, like for match we have two things. One is the match uh, function itself and also we have got a pattern matching which is match cases. So I will show you like how that work. So first of all with match. So unlike scan what we have seen like in scan whatever matching value will get will it will display it over here. But in this it will display only if the complete regex matches. Now in this see I have I have this alphabet value which is all then at the rate then this. OK, but I also have a dot com which I have not defined over here, so it is giving me null. When I define dot com, then only it is giving me the outputs, so everything should match whatever regex function I'm giving. If everything will match, then only it will give me the output, but in scan what it was doing. Whatever match at least whatever match it will represent that, but in match case, uh, sorry in match function, everything should match. Then only it will give me the output. Otherwise it will not give me the output. Okay. Okay, then pattern matching like how the match case work match case. So we can say it is a kind of nested if else. Okay, so what I'm doing I have created a function where I'm putting a number and I said this is my number. OK, if my number matches two, then it should show me even if my number matches one, then it should show me odd else the by default value will be invalid. OK, so I have given three, so my output is invalid. Now if I give it two, it will show me even. OK, so this is how match case work. OK, so like if we are giving any input to this and you given some cases like OK, this is my case. If this matches, then I should get this output. If this matches, I should get this output else by default. I should have some other output. OK, so it will it will iterate over here. It will check it and it will provide me the value with respect to that. What what conditions I have written like this is my conditions. OK, so this is how the match works. So similarly, we have one more. Uh, function which is matches. So here also we can use pattern, but how it works is so for match it gives us the value, but for matches it gives us a true or false output. OK, now in this case again I have this regex function where I have written in my string the string which I am providing there should be either a capital character, small character, numeric. OK, if that matches then give me true. So it is true. Now if I remove this. It becomes false because I am getting this. I am getting a small character and I am getting numeric, but along with that I have got capital letters also. OK, so that part is not matching. Everything is not matching. That's why it's giving me false. So for match and matches, whatever regex function we give. So with respect to that, the string which we have, everything should match it out. Then only it will work, otherwise, it will not work. Okay, now in this case, for this pattern matching, similar, I have match cases where I've used this matches function. So, what I'm doing over here is I am providing I should have small characters, I should have capital characters, also, I should have space in that somewhere, anywhere I can have a space. Okay, then only it should give me developer guide, otherwise, it should give me not matched. So if I remove this. OK, so this satisfy although I don't have space, but I have capital and small. OK, now if I remove space. And if I give a space over here, it will give me not matched because this two value, this two regex functions like the capital and small characters are matching, but I also have a space which I have not defined. That's why it is not matching. If I give a space. It's matched now. OK, so this is giving me the value because I have print. I have written it over here or I can say it like. Matched so it will give me matched. 
if I remove this, still it works. Okay, because I have given the ability like if there will be space, you can check that. Although I'm not giving that's fine, but, I, but if I don't give in regex function, but if I give it over here, it will not match because there is no provision of space over here, but I'm giving a space. Okay, any question for on this, on these functions like scan, match yeah. and matches? Yeah, tell me. What if it, it contains a special character? Yeah, we can do that. Like uh, for matches you're asking? Yeah. So now suppose I have dash. Okay, not matched. So what I need to do, I need to put dash over here. So I need to put everything which I feels like should be uh, in my string. Then only it will work. So otherwise it will not work for matches and for match as well. Now suppose I put uh, this backslash matches. Okay, so there are like say as I said, like there are different, uh, different, different which I have written. Now this I can represent it like this as also. Okay, so this this uh, backslash w this represent a small a to capital uh, small a to cap uh, small z capital a to capital z zero to one and underscore. Okay, this means that. But it doesn't match with slash. Okay, so it's not working like this. This is strange. My Rezex broke. Okay. Uh, start at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yes. See, so this worked. If I put slash, it will not work because this doesn't represent slash. It represents 0 to 9, small a to small z, capital A to capital Z, and underscore. Okay, that's why it is matching and it is giving me the value as matched. That's clear? Any question? Mm -hmm. Abhishek, uh, one question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You are telling that um, how we can identify it is a, a regex function. In it, line it number a, four, we are telling we are using regex, regex function, right? How we can right. identify it. So th this is the format how we give the regex function. This is the format of giving a regex function. That's why even like okay, it is a regex function. And in this, like if you if you search, like there are different different patterns. Okay, now coming forward, you will get more other patterns like this is a regex function. Okay, this is a regex function. This is the pattern of regex function. That's why I know like, okay, it is a regex function. Okay. Okay. The regex function will be enclosed by any these two forward slashes? Yes, 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 yes. Oh. It will be enclosed oh. by this. Okay, Vishen. thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so you can have single new single character value over here. OK, you can have a combination of this regex function. OK, so a lot of combinations you can do for that. OK, OK. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I have one question. Can we use yeah. scan uh, scan for this case state along with case statement scan? Yeah, no, no. In the by calling in another function, user defined function. Like here applying. in this, yeah. mm. yes. Does it support? Oh, wait, oh, invalid input. The input is not valid. 
it should do, but let me see. Uh, invalid input expected number. Uh, wait, I'm not giving it something right because it is converting that into, I think, it is converting into some array and it is not able to take that one with let me see but it should work i guess uh what's and it's giving now let me try directly for this Hmm, it's breaking it up. I have given something wrong, I guess. Wait, let me change it. A to Z, zero to nine. Invalid input match expected namespace or attribute. Hmm. Okay, I will check. I will check at the end. But it should take like uh, it is a okay, match no and it is a function, so it should take. But I might be giving some wrong in uh, syntax. I'm passing it little wrong, I guess. That's why it's not giving me now. But we'll check at the last for sure. Okay, okay. we'll check it. Okay. We'll try to give some other input. Okay, trim. Dream like I have explained it uh, like earlier also in many sessions. So what dream do is it just remove the spaces from the starting and end of your syntax. Okay, so whatever spaces might be there, it will remove the starting only from the start and end, not from in between the uh, string. Now suppose I have a space over here, it will not remove that, but it will remove from the starting. Okay, Sit. and for Sit. yeah, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, someone uh, like started their video. Can you stop your video? Sai Sai Raghavendra, please stop your video. They started recording uh, it. Sorry, I'm no, extremely no. sorry. I didn't know my, my video button got pressed. My bad. Sorry, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so you can yeah, start. Cool. Thanks for notifying me. Okay, they, they started sharing the screen like that. No, fine, fine. You you start. Okay, okay, okay. You you can start. Fine, fine. Okay. Okay, it's good now. Can you see my screen? Yeah, can no, everything. Yeah, you can you yeah, can go okay. yeah. yeah. So trim is like just trimming the spaces from uh starting of the string and end of the string okay that's what trim do not in between any spaces okay now find what find do is it finds a string regex function character from the given string or array okay it finds you out the index for that particular string character or regex function which you have given Okay, so for null it is empty. In this, I have given find mule soft. So mule soft as is at index zero for this array of string. So it is giving me that. Here I have just used a character which is e. So wherever I am having e, it will give me the index for that. Again, this is a regex function. So what this do? I will explain you. Like this represent all characters like small a, small z to capital A, capital Z, 0 to 9 and underscore. This is V, E, that is like before V, I can have any character, uh, any character alphabets. After V, I can have any character alphabets and this represent boundaries. That means this complete string. Okay, so in this string, wherever I am getting V, E, so it will indicate me the starting and end of that particular word. Okay, now in this case, 
I have got V E at this position in this string. So the starting and end index of this string is 0 to 10. So it is representing me that one more V we have is this. So this is the starting and end of that index like this word. So it is giving me that. So this regex function defines uh, it help us to identify the starting and end of a particular word where my this particular characters are present. OK, if I remove boundary. OK, it is giving me just the starting. OK, so if I add boundary again. It will give me for the complete word like the starting and end of the complete word and the find is used to find a particular character or string from or st from string or array of string. OK, any question on this? Anyone any question on this? You want me to try something else? You want you want to give me some uh, other value for anything? Anyone? We're good. OK. Can you explain boundary? This is this is boundary. Boundary means like uh, it's give me the starting and end of this word where V is present and this also gives me the starting and end index. Basically it gives us the index. So this is the regex for boundary. So it defines like it takes this complete thing into account and it gives us the starting and uh, and index of a particular word where this V is present. OK, so this is a, again a regex function. Uh, and this is a way to write that regex function to find that starting and end. If I remove this boundary, it will just give me the starting of each word where V is present, but not the end. OK, if I use this boundary, even the brackets, like if I'm not giving B and if I giving the brackets, then also it is giving me that. OK, so that represents the boundary. OK, thank you. Yeah. Now let me remove this here. Yeah. Now square root. So as the name suggests, just it gives us the square root of a given number. Now see for two, the square root is 1.4 for three. It is 1.7 for four. It is two. Now if I take any other number like. Say six. Seven. Eight. It will just keep on giving me the square root of that number. OK, it will keep on giving me the square root of that number. OK, this, so this was very simple. Some. This is also like a simple one, like uh, it adds all the number in an array which we give. So like 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. 3 minus 2 plus 3 is 4. OK. It gives us the sum of the number in an array. OK, and works on. Numbers only like if I try to put string. It gives me error. OK, so even it is not taking a string which is containing numbers. It is taking only numbers. OK, so this is some. Now replace so this is one of the very useful function again and I have shown it many times before as well. So what replace do is either you can replace a single character with something or a complete string with some other uh, string. OK, so this work with replace works with width. So where I am giving like this is my I have given a string where I have O, but I want to repl replace the O with EA. OK, so it does that for me. Similarly, if I want to have any regex function, I, it works with regex function also. So this represent again all the alphanumeric and underscore value and which I have re, uh, replaced with a. Now this represent all all alphanumeric and uh, characters value which I have. If I remove this. So it is taking individual. OK, and it is showing me individually. OK, so this is. 
Okay, this is the different way of writing this regex. Okay, got my point. Now, why this is AA? Like it is taking few bunch of like character and numeric values, and it is uh, representing with this two times A. And this replace is work like it is used very off like uh, very much in your logic it may use like i have used a lot many a times we also have one more function which is replace all which i have described when i was uh, showing you the session for string functions so how it works this works very similarly just i need to import the string function okay and i can use replace all and there also i can do the same thing which i am doing over here this is my string replace o with ea it will also give me the same result okay so this is with replace uh with the same with is used with replace so i have already shown you how it works so but it also works with replace also works with update and mask functions also okay with with also work with update and mask function and in the coming session we'll come up with update and mask function as well uh, at this session we are just uh, focusing on replace okay so this is how the replace and with work okay so abhishek uh, in, yeah. in yeah. line number uh, can you go to the back? Oh, yeah in this window Mm, line number seven mm -hmm. using replace function in the regex function you are we are using bla, uh, backslash w right what it means right? see again i will tell you backslash w is equivalent to a to z capital a to z zero to nine and underscore this represented this can be represented by this as well okay <coughs> okay okay that's the it. meaning of that yeah okay. thank you yeah welcome okay now entries of how this works so this one entries of gives you all from an object or array like uh, uh, sorry all from an object okay every data like what is the key what is the value for that and if there is any attribute present like in this case this is xml where i have attribute okay so i have defined it over here and it is giving me the attribute which is mule so entries of gives you out what is the key value and the attributes okay means the what what is the key like the value of that uh, that name of that key the value of that key and if there are any attributes present okay so you might ask what is this read so in coming session i will show you that but just to explain just to give you a brief so now i have this xml in string but internally it is an xml okay just to get it in this variable i have used this as string so now to convert that into a complete xml format i have used this read so this read it out as xml now the same thing i can do it like when if i need to pass a payload okay now what i can do is i can go over here i can do xml and i can put it here okay and simply i can do it as payload okay it will give me the result okay so the read function which i used is to read this string as xml and this entries all will give you the what is the key what is the value and if there is any attribute present okay it will give you all that part are you clear with that any questions on this Okay. Maybe you can hear me, correct? 
Yes, sir. Sick. I think uh, yeah. Yes, yes functions are able to everyone getting this, so we don't have okay. much. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we have two more functions: keys off and names off. Okay. So they are like uh, in one way you will find like they are similar, but they are not similar. Okay. That is the difference, and I will show you that. So first, let us go with key off. Okay. This is my key off function. What it do is it keeps you the value like the uh, what I can say uh, the actual uh, value or name of the key which I have provided. Now in this, this is a key value pair. This is an object, okay? And this is my key value pair where MuleSoft is the key and one is value here. DataWeave is the key and two is value, but it is giving me the output like the key which I have used, okay? The well, uh, the name of the key. Okay, key off, keys off. It is giving me the name of that key. Okay, similarly, when I am running it on a XML. Okay, so in this XML, I have got this suppose as a key. Okay, as the as the root, where I have got a namespace. Then I have got some internal, uh, I can say uh, subfields where I don't have a value for that, but I have got some attributes as a key. Okay, so what it is doing is when I write this function where I see where I say like to get me the namespace along with the user attributes. Okay, this at the rate defines attributes. Okay, this also defines attributes at the rate means this parts. Okay, now if you have ever written a uh, like from JSON to XML, if you write uh, any time and if you want to give attributes like this, you need to define at the rate. Okay, so this is a way to represent uh, the namespace and attributes. So in this, what I'm doing, I'm I'm calling this payload. I'm having a recursing uh, like a recursion on this payload, where I'm saying to give me the namespace and to give me the attribute. Okay, so what it is doing is, it is giving me like this is my key and key that is name. This is my attribute and this is my value. Similarly, this is my attribute and this is my value and this is my namespace. Now, why the namespace repeated twice? Because I have two inputs. Okay, one is this and one is this. That's why I have this. Now, if I remove one from this, it will show me only one namespace. Okay, so that's why it is repeating. So the keys of what it do is if you are giving any XML like this, so it gives you all the attributes, uh, sorry, all the attributes and the namespace value as well. Okay, that's what the keys of do. Okay, now if I come to names of, okay, so names of also do the similar thing. Okay, it will also give you the name of the key and everything. But when it comes to XML part and if I try to find the namespace and attribute, it's give me null. It cannot find you the uh, attributes and the namespace. That can be possible only in keys of. Okay, let me take this and let me put it over there so you will get it more easily. Okay, like let me change it to C and this to D. So my first one, A and B, this is for names of, and the last one, this two is our key of. Now see, everything is same. My input is same for this also, and my input is same for this also, apart from the function. The function is different, but everything is same. Okay, but what's the difference between names of and keys of is for A and C, there is no difference. Okay, or let me put it like this. Let me put it like this. So in this A and C, there is no difference in this. Okay, it is representing the same, but when it comes to this B and D, there is a difference where names of cannot get the attribute and namespace but keys of can get the attributes and namespace so this is the major difference between keys of and names of okay when you are working on a simple object it is fine but when you come a little bit complex with uh, xmls then it shows you the difference you got it 
Any question on this? Anyone? Can you explain more? What 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 you didn't understand? Let me know. Like uh, what you want? Like uh, see when it works on this object. So for this object, name of and key of work the same. It is giving me the same output. Okay, but when it come to uh, an XML part where I am trying to fetch the attribute and namespace, so names of get give me null, but keys of give me a result. So names of doesn't work with attributes and namespaces, but keys of work with attributes and namespaces. This is the difference. Okay. Yeah. Now size of. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The BND little bit confusing in the in line number nine and line number ten. AAC huh? um, in the both the functions are returning key values, right? Correct. Uh, here B and D. Um, mm -hmm. What we are giving the input here and what is our okay. can you please explain on side. Sure, sure, sure. So confusing. let me take it like this instead okay. of this variable. Let me take it like this. So this is a XML. Okay, okay, this is an XML. Now this is my root. User is my root where I have a namespace this. Okay. okay. In this root, I have one field user. I have another field user. Okay. So this is a empty field. I can say like if I need to like in XML, what we do if we need to represent it with some value, then we can do it like this as well. Uh, user and I can give some value over here like suppose this. Correct. Correct. This is my one field and similarly I have I can have another field. OK, so what keys and names like now this one when I come to this part. OK, so you understand uh, this XML part, correct? What is how it is uh, like what what I have given the input? You understood the input part? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. yeah. Now when I come to this part, so my this hash represent namespace and my at the rate represent attributes. OK, so now if I do payload. Payload dot user where user is my root. OK, so forget about this. I'm not taking it from here now. OK, I'm not taking it from here. I'm taking it from the payload. OK. I'm taking it from the payload. Now I am taking the namespace and the attributes. So when I say namespace, that is this. When I say attributes, that is this, not this. This is the value of user. This is not the attribute. This is the value of user. Okay. If I say it, suppose, uh, let me see it like this A, B, C. And if I say payload dot users dot user. See, I get the value. OK, I'm getting the value only one value because it is iterating, iterating over one because we have objects in that. OK, now if I do star, I get both the objects, both the users. OK, mm -hmm. so this is just giving me the value what I have in this users. OK, this is giving me the value of this user field. OK, but when I say namespace and attributes, that means. This is my namespace and this is my attributes name and last name. This is my attributes. So in name of I cannot get the namespace and attributes. OK, I cannot get that, but in keys of I can get the namespace and attributes both. Are you getting it now? This represent the namespace. This represent my attribute in XML. This is my namespace and this is my attribute and this is my value part. This is my key. User is my key. Abhishek is my value name and last name is my attribute here. XML NS is my namespace and to get the namespace. I use hash to get the attributes I use at the rate. That's the property. Yeah. I, you, you get, yeah, 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 yeah. You are telling at the rate we use it for 
to, to represent the attributes what about the hash i didn't get that one hash namespace, namespace. this one okay. this one namespace okay okay yeah i okay. got it for the object thank you yeah any other question can't we get the values also from piece of uh, function values yeah. we, we 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 iterate it over uh, like we mostly try to find the uh, for key of and uh, for name of we try to find the namespace or attributes or yeah, we can yeah or we can say the keys okay not the, not the values Okay. But uh, yeah, if I try this, oh, okay. I'm... See, it's only give me the field name. It will not give me the value for that. If I do it like this, it will give me the index. Okay, it doesn't give me the value. It gives me either the key name or the namespace. The way I defined it, like dot hash. Okay, to get the value, I have used it, this function. Okay, using this, <clears throat> I can uh, get the values. Okay, oh. yeah. Now size of, so size of is also like something which is used commonly. I can see like this. What it does is it helps you to get the like if you are giving a string, then the length of the string. If you are giving an object then in an object how many uh, like values you have like uh, this is one value this is one value so it is giving me two if we are doing it for an array of uh, like string or character then it says that like how many values are there we have three values so it is giving us three for number it will always give us one because it considered that as one okay whatever i give for binary it works on binary also for null it is null okay now if i try to give some string still it will treat it as one component it will not give you the size of this particular string but it will give you the size of the array like we have three component in this array in this object we have three comp uh, two components so it is giving us two okay do you got it like size of it is basically to get the length of a string or to get the number of element in an object or to get the number of element in an array any any question on size of like this is quite important so do you want me to try with something else any other input you want to give uh, the size yeah. of function is separating the each objects or element by comma only. Uh, see, if you are how, talking how about is counting on the how to, how to, size of means, yeah, we huh. are seeing commas. Yes, here. correct. So by, yes, by by separating, like if it is an array and object, then definitely by commas. If it is a single string, then then the length of that string. And if it is a number, then this number consider as one. Whatever number you give, it doesn't separate it with each character or length. It will consider that as one only. But uh, yeah, otherwise, with with respect to this comma, what I have, what we have given, it separates with that, saying that like how many elements we have. Okay. Or, yeah. Okay. Abhishek, uh, can yeah. you try size of hundred comma two hundred? 100 comma 200 like this. Yeah. So it should be an array. So I will put it into an array. So see, comma separated two. Oh, that is fine, but you are given size of 100 means like what does it mean exactly? See, 100 means I have given a number and I am finding like what is the length of this number? Like I was finding whether it is it's give me 100 or what it gives. So it considered this complete as one. OK, it like in this you see this is a string. Uh, this is a string, correct, which yeah. I have enclosed in quotes. So this consider each character as individually and it has given me the length as eight. So this is a length of eight. But in number it doesn't do that. It doesn't simplify it as a single character. 
it take it as a whole that's why it's giving me one uh, like so you they, can, okay. mm -hmm. so, so you mean any number the size is one right correct correct can can you try with uh, 100 dot something decimal value yeah see any negative value negative value okay Okay. Negative one, still one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in that case, yeah. Abhishek, um, here we um, when we gave the string, it is counting each character, right? Correct. The complete length uh, of this. Why it is not okay? In the string case, it is taking like that. It should give one, right? In that case also. That's what the difference. That's what the difference. If you are giving string, it will give you the complete length. Okay. okay. But if you give number, see automatically it is converting that into a string, and that like thinks uh, thinks about like it is a single part. It is not different. Now yes. let us see what if I make yeah. it as like that this. Three. It will come three. See. Okay. Yes. So that's the difference between number and string. Like how it works with number and how it works with string. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what if if we have an array, um, array in the array, array of array. Yeah. Yes. Like, like something like this. Now suppose. Yeah. See, if I put a comma separated array with some other values. Two. So in this case, what I need to do is, like, either I need to individually check this. Okay, but if you are giving an array of array, it will see this comma, which is like, uh, which is the part of this particular array. So it will check that, and it will give the value of that. Then it will not check this. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Types of what types of do is types of give you the. Uh, like, uh, what type of input is this? Now, this is an array, so it is giving me it is an array type. This is an object, so it gives me object. This is a string, it gives me string. A number, number. This is binary, binary, and null is null. So it gives me the type of input I am passing, like whether it's an array, object, string, number, or like any other thing which I am passing. OK, so it gives me the type of that particular. Now, if I remove binary, it give me string because now it is treating it, it as a string. OK, so type of gives like what type of input we are giving. OK, let me close this. Yeah. Now value of so this the way we have seen okay the way we have seen keys of and names of like they were uh, just giving us the like either the name of the key or the namespaces and all those so in values of it gives us the value with respect to the any key we have it just gives us the value okay so we have keys of names of and values of keys of and names of give us the key uh, the data of the key but values of give us the actual value for a particular key it represent the values okay the same way how i have done like payload dot and then i have given some data so that also represent the values of that particular key similarly if we do values of then we are getting the value of uh, this object just to get out just to get out the values from a object uh, we, we we do it like this okay and it works on object key value pair for null it is null any question on that till now any question on whatever we have done hello guys any question Can you give arrays? Arrays? No, sorry. Can you show uh, me that value? Value. This. Yeah. yeah. Can we do arrays? Mm, no, I guess it works on object only. 
Okay, it doesn't work on array, it works on object. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, can someone go on mute? Someone is unmute. Yeah, thank you. Now pluck. This is also an important function. So how did this work is? So there are different scenarios for this. So first is it converts an object into an array. Okay, the first thing is plug converts the object into an array. Okay, now see this is an object which I have given. When I use plugged with key value pair, it is giving me an array out of that. Okay, this is giving me an array. Now to make it more simplify, let me see if I can. like to give a good visibility. For interview point of view, this function is very much important. Almost okay. like 50% interview, you will get this uh, what is plug function and how it works. Yeah, so this is very common question and people ask. So the main function of plug is to convert a object into an array. Okay, also we can fetch out the key value pair. We can reverse the key to value part and value to key part like in this case. Okay, if I remove this index part, let me remove it for now. Okay, now uh, is it visible nicely to you or are you facing difficulty? Uh, visible visible you are you're getting it now like how it is represented okay yes Fine. okay yeah. so this the is output, my yeah, yeah. the output we are not able to see fully whenever required you can stall yeah. Or allow. yeah 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 that that i will do that i will do not okay. not an issue okay. just the thing is you should get how it is structuring that one that is important okay the structure is important because uh, it works on the structure only so see in this i have a object where a equal to B and C equal to D. When I did pluck with value key, and this is my first first part should represent key, another part should represent value. So it has represented me this object into an array with the key value pair, where A B is my first key value pair and C D is my second key value pair. Also, it has divided this complete object into two different objects. Okay, here you can see it is a one object, but it has divided into two different objects in an array. It is now an array of object. Similarly, in this case, okay, so this was as it is. This was my key, this was my value, same as this, but I want the value should become the key and the key should become the value. So this is what I have used. Okay, again, this is my object. I have reversed it. Now my value become my key. See, this was my key value. A was my key, B was my value. But now A is my value, B is my key. I can also reverse it using pluck. Now you can get a question. You have an array of object or you have an object suppose and you want to reverse the, uh, the position of key and value. Like you want to make the key as value and the value as key. So how you do that? So you use pluck for an object. By using that, you can do that. Okay. So here I can also represent the index. Now I can know what is the index of this particular objects. So here I got the index zero position one position. Okay, this is my index. Similarly, I can use dollar dollar notation where three dollars represent index, two dollar represent my key and see just dollar represent my value. So when I write it like this, and when I say dollar, 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 that means it's giving me the index. So this is at index zero and this is at index one. I say for key, give me the key out of this. So this is my key, A and C. This is A, this is C. And this gives me the value, which is B and D. So this is my B, this is my D. Did you understand or you want me to change like to some other name to make it more understandable? 
So let me take it as mule. This is data. I will make it as B and I will use the same throughout to make it more understable like by I think the B and C make little confusion. Uh, one quick question. Why we reverse it? Like is there any use case for that? I'm, I'm just giving you an uh, like idea like if you want to then you can do it like this. This is this is also possible. So I'm I'm giving all the possibilities like which I which I know and which is possible with this. That's why I'm just giving a possibility. It's upon you whether you want to use it or not. But there is a possibility to do that. There is a possibility to reverse the key value position like key to value and value to key. We can do that using pluck. OK, that's an okay. option in Thank this. You. So see, Abhishek, Abhishek, yeah. I, I need to understand that five uh, line number five. So five, okay. Here, uh, first, A is our key value key, and uh, the object is the value here. After that, we are using the plug function. Mm -hmm. Okay. After that plug function, in the bracket, we are giving the value key and the arrow mark. Mm -hmm. After that, we are giving uh, in the bracket of key. Uh, can you please explain this? Uh, what is what is it represents left side of arrow and right side of our arrow? OK, what did it represent? Why we are keeping that key in the right side in the brackets? What is the importance okay. of that bracket? So see these are some of the like uh, variable I can say which I have defined. So this val represent this value. This key represent this key. OK, so now uh, this is a kind of syntax. Now if you'll see the syntax, see. What is say I have an object of key value pair. OK, let me take it to the data with part. Let me explain you here. So this is a syntax. So this says object. OK, this is my object which is of key value pair, which is my key and which is my value. So if I need to use plug, OK, I, when I'm using plug, so the first one should represent the value which is this. The second one should represent the key. And the third one should represent the index, which is this one. If you'll see in this part, okay? okay, which will give you an array out of that. So to generate a proper output, okay, I have given it like my key should be my first part and my value should be my second part after this column. Okay, so this is a syntax part which I have written. Now, if I write only value, it gives me only value. Now, what if I write only key? It gives me only key, but when I give it as a key value pair. Like this. It gives me the complete array of object with the key value pair. Did you get it now? Yeah, yeah. what yeah. will what it will happen? We remove the bracket uh, to the key right side of the arrow. Uh, you you mean this? Yeah, the key is enclosed in the values, right? What will okay. happen? Okay, okay. So this will simply name it as key. It will not take the value of that key. It will simply represent it as a string, and it will put it here. Okay, okay. Yeah. If we keep in the brackets, it will. Yeah. Take the if key it, of it, the it takes the yeah, correct, correct, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so this is very important, and you can get some question on what is plug and why we use it. OK, I have a question. Yeah, yeah please. But it is. Um, I mean, it's kind of uh, advanced than this. So my question is, so if I use a group by right and mm -hmm. if I follow if I follow the group by operation with the plug, mm -hmm. what are the tags which I get from the group by are removed in plug? So is there any way for me to uh, still uh, get the tags and just convert the object into an array? Uh, see, like in that case, if uh, like I'll just request, can we take this question on another session? Because in that session, okay. I am going to discuss group by. Okay. 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 So, so yeah, so exactly. there we can take this question because now it is only about plug. So what okay. you are saying, I will try to understand and we'll try to do that on another session. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, cool. 
Okay, cool. Because, Thank you. Yeah, because group by is also very important, and I have few uh, use case for you guys to understand is better. So let okay. us discuss on that day because many of us may not understand what group by do if I simply yeah. use that function. Correct. So let yeah, us yeah. take it on another session. Okay. Okay. Cool. Makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Now excite type. So this is mostly for namespaces which can be used in XML. So this is like uh, I won't explain this much, but yeah, just to like uh, get an heads up on this. So what is do is just an excite type which uh, use uh, like which creates a namespace in your XML. Okay just like the x i gave you like what type of schema is this and then the type is like i have given as user and mule so it is representing mule user so it is representing this at the key part and this is the value i can say then this is just a xml representation where i i have name as a field and mule as a value and this is my namespace so when i say namespace mule and i write it as x site type it is giving me the namespace over here this is my XML namespace mural XML namespace X, uh, XSI, which is the schema and the type is mule user. OK, so this is mostly with the like uh, XML part and I have personally not seen it much. I have not used it much personally, but yeah, namespace we have used like we talk about namespace. So namespace we use and uh, like earlier at the starting of the session, like in the basics of data wave, Ravi has already explained what the use of namespace. OK, so this is just a function for data wave. Uh, sorry, XML. Zip, yeah, so this is what it do is. If you are giving two different array, it will zip up, up into a single array with respect to the index if it is matching values like this. Now see, I have one array this and I have another array this. So it is convert merging the arrays probably I can say. So array into an array. So see, this is my array into an array. Okay, so first index is zero and here the first index is A. So it is making that into group into an array. There, here first index is one here it is B so it is grouping that so it is merging and grouping the arrays with respect to the index value of that. Okay. Whether it is matching or not. Okay, so in this case I, I have an array of five uh, four characters and here I have only two so it will just take that two like the smallest value which I have given like this is the smallest with two input. So it will just take the two input from the bigger one also and it will create an array of array. OK, this is the representation. So it is something like this. If I show you in more visible way. OK, so this one represent this and for this one it will be like this. I will just create it for you like it will be A and B and C and D. OK, and it takes only two input. OK, only two. We cannot give more than like three or four uh, arrays and zip that. It won't work like that. It at a time it works with two. Maybe we can do it like this. Like once we are getting the output with this, then we can do it like this. OK, let us see. OK, so it works like that. OK, but at a time it takes only two values. Uh, Abhishek, I think it's not too. We can increase the zip. Uh, you can increase BD and you can add E also there. Something uh, inside the array you are saying. Yeah, you can add. No, no, I am not talking about array. Uh, I am talking about like uh, values in the sense. Uh, suppose I can give it like this. Like me, let me do it like this. I am not talking about the inputs in the array, but like see here, I have already used now oh, four. I am not talking about that. I'm talking about this representation. Uh, like this way. One. 
and two. I'm talking about this inputs two at a time. I can I'm seeing yeah, that. Got, got it. OK, so this is what the zip do. Now, similarly, we have the opposite unzip here. We can give more values. OK, we can give more than two. So what it do is. Uh, let me try if I can take it like I tried. I don't think it will know it will not. It accepts only two. Or. Yeah, only two. Now just the opposite is unzip. We can give more than two values to this, but what it does is. Uh, first of all, Actually, yeah. For one time, can you go to the zip zip function? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, here in second line B, we have yeah. right side. We have two B A B D, right? It will, yeah. What it will do? Zip. It will merge it two arrays. Or? Uh, what it do is OK. You, let me make you understand again. So what zip do is now suppose I have two arrays. OK, yeah. it merge the array into an array. OK, so it is adding this to array, but how it is adding it is adding on the value on the index value. Now in this case, now if you'll see this. Now my first index value is zero and here my first index is a. So what it is doing. This is the representation for that. OK, so what it is doing, it is merging the array inside an array, but with respect to each index value. With respect to index value of two arrays, two arrays. OK, now see. In this zero was my first at my zero index for this array and a was my zero index for this array. So it merged that two index into an array. OK, and for one and B also same and then the complete is merged into a single array. OK, yeah, coming okay. to the line number eight. Yeah. It won't um, we have BD, right? This Correct. BD values. OK, only it will consider an index. Okay, the smallest because, one. Yeah, yeah. Second, and yeah, second array we don't have. Uh, two, three arrays. That's why it is not comparing with the first array. Not matching with the not matching. Yeah, not matching with yeah. this just yeah. with the index first first two index, which is the smallest one in this. OK, OK, it consider the smallest one first. It doesn't yeah. take more than that. OK, yeah, because of not existing in the second array. The yes, only array, uh, more than two array, uh, indexes that is it is not matching. If we have equal equal of indexes that will match. Correct, okay. correct, exactly. OK, got it. Thank yeah. you. Now for unzip also it it preferred to have like the same uh, size of arrays. Now in this case I have this two again, which is of same size. <coughs> So again, it is taking the indexes, the same indexes. OK, and it is representing me the value. Now here 0 is 1 at 0 index. 1 is at 0 index. It created that into a single array. OK, and this is also like at the 1 1 index position. So it is taking that. OK, so now it is unzipping this two. So we can take more than two values, but if it is of not same length, then what it does, OK, same length and same type, suppose we say. So what it does, it takes only the first index of each value, like in this case. Now this is of this is an array of two data. This is a three. This is of two again. This is a three again. So it is taking only the first index. Now it is not like it is only number. Even I take a combination of number and string, then also it will take only the first item, only the zero index item from each each array like whatever I have defined if it is more than two. Now what if I have two? Let's see that. See if it is two, then it will unbind it to two separate array with taking the index of like the smaller one, which is this one. We have only two characters zero and one, so it is taking only zero and one. OK, but if it is more than two and if it is of not same type, then it represents it like this. OK. Now let us check what if everyone is of same type, then what happens? Means the same length, I mean. See, 
it created two different array of each index in a single part. Got this one? Zip and then zip. So this is how it works. But the result looks same, right? A zip and then zip. Sorry, just the the result. Uh, and zip look like the yes, same. Yes, right? looks yeah, looks like the same. But the difference is, in this I am giving an array of array. Okay, and it is representing me an array of array. That's fine. But here I am giving the input as an array of array. But in zip I was not giving array of array. I was just giving two different array. I was giving it like this. And it was giving me an output with array of array, like merging the arrays. But in unzip, I'm giving an input with array of arrays only. I'm not giving like single arrays over here. So okay. it gives me error. Yeah, that's the difference. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Akshay, yeah. can you comment the sixth line and can you keep the unzip also on the same function, same fifth line? Uh, the, how, the how next line in the next line. Next line. Hmm. Copy paste and instead of zip, we can put the unzip. Okay, the same. This same yeah. you are saying, huh? Yeah, okay, we will fine, see that. Fine. Fine. Okay, we will do that. So basically, the same will give me error because it should be an array of array. Like this, you are saying, correct? Correct. So unzip doesn't work with two individual array it should be an array of array so to make it work what i need to do is i need to put this over here then it will work this is an array inside an array see uh if i like let me make it this way i think this will be more clear see this is my one array comma separated second array in this this is inside my array of array. This is like not two individual arrays. This is inside my array of array. If I try to make it same as like the above one, it will throw me error. See, on this individual array, if I put, it will throw me error because that is out of it in the syntax. It should be completely inside an array like this. Then only it will work. Can See, you try array of array in zip function? Array of array in zip, okay. See. Okay. So I what I need to do is I need to give again an individual here. See, like this. Uh, say R and T. Now it will work. Okay, this is a array merging with another individual array. So this the output of this become one individual part and this become one individual part. Yeah, but someone asked what? So yeah, only difference is zip and unzip is uh, it will work on the individual arrays. It uh, unzip will work only uh, within the arrays. Within the arrays, yeah, true. Yeah. Okay. But output so, is okay. Yeah. No, same uh, in the sense like uh, for zip. It is taking only the lowest value, like if I have got a, a long string where this is four and this is two, like two string. Uh, wait, I will show you again. One more difference. OK. And for unzip, this is my unequal part. Okay, first of all, zip cannot take more than two values, okay, at a time, two individual, more than two individual uh, array. But here we can give inside this array, we can give a number of uh, individual array we want inside this array. Okay, that is the first thing. Second thing, it takes the lower one the lower index and it only represent that in this case if my size is not matching it will just give me out the index from the first index from each in, uh, individual array okay that is also a difference okay 
okay yeah now one more good ex uh, uh, use case read url so what it does is it includes a base url like class path based url and return the value for that okay now suppose in your any point studio you have defined any property or anything in your resource file or anything anywhere and you want to read that example or that uh, that file then you can use read url okay let me show you over here now this is a studio part so now i have defined a data with dot dwl file inside my resource folder where i have a message test read url and i want to represent or i want to read that using my data view so here i will use the read url function where i need to give class path because i am taking it from my resource and the like i can say the url or the location of that file which i have uh, kept like if it is it is if it is in resource so uh, src main resources then i just need to give the name of that one okay but if i create a folder and if i put it inside a folder then i also need to give the complete path like the folder name also like just it is uh, calculating that just give me a minute yeah see so i have i have created a file i have not given anything to the data wave nor i have uh, defined any file like if you'll see i have not defined any file i have just made it inline so this is also not like i am giving any inline function over or file over here i am just reading it from the <clears throat> location so that is what read url do now suppose if i get give a folder over here and i name it as data wave okay and i put this inside this i will save it okay it's saved okay it's giving me error saying unable to find this but if i give the complete location it's give me the output okay so this is what read url works and this this read url get used basically most of the time in aminets where you will define like when you create aminets you define some uh, test file in your test resource and then you need to use that or refer that in your aminet okay then you use this read url function over there to get that file from the resource path from this test resource path from the class path to read that file from there we use this read url so it is very much useful in your aminet okay mostly there we use it very 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 frequently we use it okay so this is the, how the read url yeah the class path is uh, compulsory right abhishek uh, class path indicates like you are taking it from your api this is your class paths na source main resources source main these are your class paths so that yeah. defines you are taking it from your api itself you have defined yeah. it over here before what is the path for data wave or data wave folder that path will come for that class yes path. yeah so see now if i go to the property for this one okay if i go to the property it says me data wave source main so data wave is my api name source main resource is my this one and this is my data wave path because i found the like i i search for this property now if i open this and if i try to search the property for this file then see it will show me the complete location and i have taken this part and this part is known as the class path i can say this is represented as the class path and this is my actual location where i have kept it got it okay yeah yeah now the last part is have given ha huh. yeah what if i have given what if we have given in file instead of payload do we need to refer from outside of the uh, studio this file no 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 yeah. this is different thing like uh, 
I think you have not attended the first class where uh, we just told this. This file is to write a data with code and to like to externalize a data with code. Okay, so that is like now suppose if I write a data with code here like this. Let me edit this. Uh, I write it like this. Mm, output application JSON payload. OK, now suppose I write it like this. I save it. OK, when I say file, that means what I'm doing. I'm not writing a data with like I'm not writing it here like this. I'm not doing that. I'm not writing this inside this. What I'm doing is I'm taking it from an file. I have externalized the data with code so that if the same code is getting used again and again from somewhere like uh, in my in my several. Uh, I can say uh, in my several other data wave, the same code is getting used, so I don't need to use that again and again. Uh, invalid file name. Something went wrong. OK, uh, let me put it directly. So data weave slash. Data weave dot DWL. OK, so now it will come from this one. Now if I do a and if I save it. If I go to. What happened? It's not taking or it's okay, so it will automatically reflect. It will automatically take. Yeah, maybe I need to write it over here and it will reflect there. OK, I will. Yeah, if I'll make any change in that code automatically it should reflect in my data with let me try one more I'll try with any it's not working why oh, okay it has give it has created a separate one okay okay i have given oh, okay i've given a wrong name sorry i've given a wrong name i didn't see that so see if i do any change over here it's reflects over here OK, so I have given a wrong name. I have given OK, I missed a E. That's why it has created a new one over there. See, it has created a new file and whatever I write inside this data wave, it will reflect over there and that can be used uh, throughout any other data waves as well. OK, OK. Yeah. Yeah, now the last part, this is for logs. OK, so this won't represent in your data with code. OK, this can be represent only in your console. Now in this case, see. Now this is my payload or let me take it over here as a JSON. OK. This is my JSON. OK, I will take it as. Instead of this, I will take it as. Payload. OK, I need to make it a string. Payload dot mule. Yeah. OK, so I have given log data wave and Huston V. So it is it will only represent me the value part. It will not represent me this uh, expression part. OK, and I will show you how it works in this. It will not it will not take this into account when you are writing it into a data wave. This data wave and info part is only applicable to the console part, not to the data wave. So here what it is doing, it is taking at this one as this like this. It is considering this as like this and it is giving me only six. It is not considering this info part. OK, so this get works only in the console. So I already have written this. OK, I already had this over here and now I will just run it and I will show you how it prints the data in the console, how it prints this part. So this logger is for my payload. 
whatever I'm getting from the data wave. So it will represent that. Abhishek, meanwhile, can you show me that uh, syntax of the lag? What is the syntax? Uh... Sure, I will show you. So the syntax is okay. prefix string and the value. So this is my prefix string, which is an expression for me, I can say. And this is the value which I need to print. OK, so this is the syntax of that. So now if like once this executes, so when you go to data wave, data wave can only print the value. It doesn't print this prefix or this uh, expression part. It only prints the value, which you can see over here. But it works only in console. So when I see the console, see now. I'll just stop it. See. My logger, this is my logger part, okay, which is pay, uh, which is showing me the payload, which is A and B. But my console prints, see this. This is what my console is printing. This is a log which my data wave console is uh, like the from the data wave the console is printing. So data wave. And this one. Info. This see I have provided the payload as A and B. OK, so this one is coming over here as A and B. This is my logger part, but this is my log part. This is my log console log where I'm getting the expression data wave along with the value here. I have given it as info along with the value. So I'm getting that. OK, so this is like logging. <clears throat> like if you want to log any warning or any anything like uh, custom, you want to customize that. So you can use this data wave to log that in your console. Like if if I'm passing it over here and I want like uh, it should it should come as warning. OK, it should come at like this so I can I can like put it like this and then when I will run it, it will print that. OK, let me remove this also so that it doesn't print the payload. It will just pin the logger. So when I run it. Meanwhile, anyone have any question? So let us give a little time to it to execute. See, it's given me the log. I have not printed any payloads, so just this one. Okay, I have a I have a 10 second scheduler, so after every 10 second, it will keep on printing this. Now you got it. How this log function works? It works only on your console, not in data wave. It will not work in your data wave. Okay, so that's. That's the end for our today's session. Just we'll have a recap what all function we had yesterday and what we discussed today. Just a quick. We will have it. So yesterday we had all these functions. OK, yesterday we have all these functions. Today we discuss about this functions like split by join by replace with size of type of scan match matches in match and match case uh, matches. We have seen the pattern matching also like the match cases thing. OK, that also we have seen read URL logs. Pluck OK, so split by how this is done, like what is the syntax? Uh, then join by split by join by. Contains. UUID randomly generates OK random. 
scan, match, matches, trim, find, square root, sum, replace, width, entries of, then keys of and names of, and we have seen the difference between keys of and names of, then size of we have seen, types of we have seen, values of, pluck, we have discussed the different different scenarios and like what is the useful use of plug. Then exercise type, zip, unzip, read URL, logs, and that's all. So, uh, which yeah. is in, in which which situations we will use U, UUID function? UUID like when you need to randomly generate any UUID like for suppose you have a correlation uh, like we use correlation ID suppose okay now what the correlation ID is helpful is if we are using API lit connectivity architecture then we are using then we are having experience layer process layer and system layer so now you will generate a UUID in your experience layer and you will pass it through all your other layers so that suppose if there is any error in your API. So using that UUID or that correlation ID, you can track it. OK, you can track uh, like uh, at for which input you got an uh, error and uh, what fix need to be done. So it is useful for that. So UUID randomly uh, creates a UUID. OK, it's randomly create some uh, like a string or some output. OK, random numbers. Random unique, unique number. Yes, random unique number we can say. Sorry. Like this. So every time if I try to refresh it, it will keep on giving me another. See, different, different. If you'll see this, if I'll keep on try to refresh it, it will keep on changing. It randomly do that. OK, so in previous session, we have seen it with number random and random in it, which used to generate random numbers and this one generate uh, random string with this like this type of format like UUID. OK. Any other okay. questions? Basically, mm -hmm. the UUID number we will use to track our. Yeah, we can say like correlation ID. We can use it as a correlation ID. OK for tracking purpose.